The New England Patriots will visit the Cleveland Browns on Sunday, October 9th in Week 5 NFL action. The New England Patriots weave their way to a 3-1 record without Tom Brady taking the snaps. But now everything should return to normal for the AFC East favorites. Brady will get a nice easy game to get back into the fold against the winless Cleveland Browns. New England is laying double digits on the road in Brady's first game since last season's playoffs, and the total is in the mid-40s. The Patriots went 3-1 without Brady and also covered the number in all three of those wins. Even when Jimmy Garoppolo went down, the Patriots managed to win in cover on a short week with rookie quarterback Jacoby Brissett. The Browns are really unlucky to be just 1-3 against the spread. They should have covered last week against Washington, if not for a horrendous fumble recovery call, and they covered for most people against Baltimore in Week 2. But the line moved and closed at plus 4, and the Browns lost by 5. The New England Patriots are one of four teams without an interception this season. The garoppolo brissett tandem was sixth in completion percentage at 66.7. Garoppolo and Brissett did take eight sacks, so we'll have to see if that's more about inexperience and holding on to the ball too long, or if the Patriots' offensive line is having some blocking issues. Keep in mind that Rob Gronkowski has only one catch for 11 yards. Like Garrett Blount has rolled up 352 yards on 88 carries, though he has fumbled twice and lost one of them. The Patriots ran for 4.2 yards per carry in Brady's absence. The Patriots have been good defensively as well. Some of their stats are skewed a little bit by carrying big leads in some of their games, but they only allowed 61 points through four games. Ryan Tannehill wrapped up some garbage time yards in week two and there are some worries in the secondary. The Patriots only have three picks on the year, and opponents are completing 66% of their passes. The Cleveland Browns come in as underdogs once again, just like they will be pretty much every week this season. But it has been a motivating factor for the team through four weeks. They have been better than 1-3 against the spread indicates, though it's hard to argue that they should be better than 0-4 straight up. Cody Kessler has looked competent in his two starts, completing just over 67% of his passes with a touchdown and a pick. He has taken four sacks, showing some of that inexperience. The big story here is the running game. Isaiah Crowell and Duke Johnson are both averaging over six yards per carry. This should come as no surprise since Jackson had great success with a two-back system in Cincinnati. Terrell Pryor has been a big weapon in all facets of the offense, and it's tough for opposing teams to plan for him. The offense isn't really the question this week for the Browns. It has to be the defense. The Browns' defense has given up 10 passing touchdowns and 15 plays of 20 yards or more. If not for the five interceptions, things would look even worse. The lack of a pass rush has been concerning, and Joe Haddon has been in and out of the lineup. Cleveland has also failed at the line of scrimmage, by allowing 4.3 yards per carry. The expectation heading into this game is for Brady to carve up this porous secondary. The Cleveland Browns are just not a good team, but this is a huge game for them. Anytime a team like this comes to town, the players are excited. Those feelings are magnified by the return of Tom Brady and the ESPN and CBS spotlight. Things just haven't worked out for the Browns this season, and they keep fighting. They've lost two quarterbacks and fell victim to awful penalties on just about every 50-50 call. Don't expect Brady and the Patriots to be firing on all cylinders in this game. With Pittsburgh and Cincinnati on the horizon, the Patriots may not be fully invested in this game, and that should allow the Browns to hang around and cover the spread. Our pick is the Cleveland Browns at plus 10.